What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is part two of this amazing strat that I bought. Might be a little wiggly today because this table is very, very loose. Okay, so I bought this Stratocaster, the, what is this thing called? The Roadhouse Deluxe Strat. Um, and what I wanna talk about today is when you buy a new guitar, uh, I know a lot of people like to blame the quality of the guitar on various things. Um, usually they blame it on Guitar Center or whatever big box store they bought it from and how terrible it is. But the bottom line is there's things that happen to guitars uh, and there are processes that go back to the manufacturer. Some of them go back to the store. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is if it, unless it is an extremely exclusive brand, PRS, for example, they do a pretty good job. Um, McPherson, obviously, does an incredible job. But normal guitars, for normal people like us, uh, are going to need some work even from the factory. And so that is the case with this new Strat that I bought. So we're going to take a look at it and um, we're going to do some things. Okay, so the number one problem, uh, obviously besides setup, and It's always something. It's always something. Okay, so we'll get to the setup here in a few minutes and we'll go through the setup on the guitar and then we're gonna do a dedicated video to actually setting up the tremolo because that's like its own thing. We wanna f I wanna float it, um, kind of like Jeff Beck style. But before we get to that, we just need to do some, some basic things. Um, one of the things that'll happen on less expensive guitars, and I'm a little bit surprised that it's happened on this guitar, um, is that the fret ends cannot be sometimes they can not be 100% smooth to the neck. And it actually happens more than you think on more guitars than you would think. Now, many people may not notice this, but I'm, it really annoys me. So uh, we're gonna go through it. Basically, what we're gonna use is just this cheap set of files. You can get this on Amazon or at Harbor Freight or wherever. We'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, these are just the cheap diamond files. And on this particular guitar, there's a couple of sharp frets uh, that are sticking out a little bit. But what the main problem with this one is, and I've never actually, it's been a long time anyway, since I've seen this before, is what it actually is, is there's little lumps on the side where the finish, because it's a maple neck, so basically they spray the whole thing and then they clean the frets off, but they didn't do it a great job of it, so it's got like these little bumps on the sides of the frets. Um, here is a macro shot of that. I took a macro shot with a still shot, and you can see like little buildup of fret of, of urethane on the sides of the frets. And you can feel that as a lump and it's sort of annoying, especially since, you know, it's one fret right after the other. And then the other thing is here's another photo where you can see a little bit of edges, right? Like where it's not 100% smooth. So what I'm doing is basically very carefully going along and removing the finish I'm using the edge of the file and I'm going along and I'm using and I'm just using the edge of the file to clean off the finish very very carefully off of the edge of the fret. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to take the side of the fret or side of the file what I'm doing anyway is take the side of the file going like this cleaning the finish off and then just smoothing the top of the fret. Not using a lot of pressure. You don't want to bear down on it because you don't want to groove the end of the fret or misshapen it in any way. You're just trying to get any burrs or anything like that off of it. So I'm taking a couple of just light strokes, letting the weight of the file do what it wants to do, and then feeling it, and then smoothing it back over. If you have an edge, so a lot of times if this is fret is sticking out and giving you an edge, 
Then what you can do is take a three angle file, which should be in one of your cheap little file sets like you got here, and put this kind of in the crook with the fret against, like against the, this way, but you don't want to bear down on it because you don't want to groove the fret or the fretboard right here. So, um, and you can use fret guards for this, but the problem is, is it, it sets up too high. It doesn't really work. So you just kind of have to be careful. You can tape it up if you want. So you put it here like this, and then you just roll the fret file. You roll the file over the top of the fret, and that'll give you a nice round edge on the top, and it won't be all burred up and stuff. And you just one thing at a time, go along and go along and go along. I've worked my way all the way down to here. See, that's got some finish stuck on it. <laughs> that was just finished, chipped off. Never really had that problem before, but there you go. This is in the money making end of the fretboard, so we want to make sure this is right. Little burr on the side of the fret there. Take that off. Next one, see that? Finish just came off. But you can feel that when you play, it just drives me insane. Now you could cheat and take a like a paint stick with like 600 grit paper and just run it up and down the side but the problem is is that you would end up having like raw spots you would rub the finish off of the edge of the fretboard here um, which is fine it doesn't hurt anything because you're gonna wear it off anyway when you play but um, you could so you could just cheat and go like that and, and smooth it all down. I have done that. On a rosewood fretboard or a pale ferro fretboard, it doesn't hurt anything. You just oil it up afterwards and it's fine. So you could just take that paint stick and run it up and down. But on a maple fretboard, I wanna be a little bit more specific here, at least for the time being, and show you the way, well, the less intrusive way. Not everybody is like me in that they don't really care what their guitar looks like or they just wanted to play right. All right. I guess we'll flip this thing around and go the other direction and do the other frets on the other side or the other end of all these frets. In case you're wondering what all the noise is, uh, we're in this RV park and it's been like heavily flooded. Um, and there's literally like mud holes everywhere. There was a big hole over there from rainstorms and obviously with 30,000 pound vehicles they got to fix the roads so that's what they're doing which is good because when we go to leave I don't want to get stuck so it's just where we are right now the low country of South Carolina that's that's the way it is in the winter time it's just really really rainy so that's what we're dealing with okay so um, I've got this pretty well set um, the trick with this is you just go slow take your time listen to a podcast watch a Netflix movie and just one fret at a time get it how you feel it get it how you want it to feel on the end um, without doing damage to the finish just just take your time you don't need to it's not a skill I mean I guess it is a skill to get faster at it but Speed's not important. We just want it just to come out nice and clean and get rid of all of those edges. This guitar wasn't bad as far as fret sprout, okay, um, which is where the fret actually sticks out from the end of the fretboard. Now, typically, that has to do with humidity and how the guitar was stored. If you have fret sprout, make sure that you get uh, your humidity to 50 to 60% 
for the guitar for a couple of weeks and the fret sprout might actually go away because then the wood will expand and it'll fit the frets again. If it doesn't, um, then you'll need to go and do what we just did with a little more aggression because you're trying to finish the ends of the frets. This particular situation on this guitar was actually just finish on the end of the frets. Um, you know, we just had basically had to chip it off and make sure that it was nice and smooth. And then there was a couple of little sharp fret spots that I felt that I went ahead and fixed while I was here. Um, now the other thing that we're going to have to do is uh, we need to go through and make sure that the frets are level. I think I've got a couple of high frets or maybe a couple of frets that have kind of popped up a little bit. So in our next video, we're going to go ahead and level this fretboard out. We're going to take the strings off. We're going to straighten it out. We're going to use a straight edge. We're going to find the fr high frets. We're going to mark them with a Sharpie, etc. We're going to go through that process and spot check any high frets that are on this guitar. I don't think it's going to need a whole leveling crown, but we'll probably have to fix a couple. So that's what we're going to do in our next video. I will put a link in the description of this video to the files and a couple of the other little tools that we are assembling the fretwork stuff that we're going to use in the next video so you can have it and maybe work along with your own project. Um, make sure you check out patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. Our, our uh, workshop that we had last night was super fun. We worked on nut stuff, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, make sure you check that out and uh, hit the little member button because members on YouTube and Patreon members have seen this video for a week already. Um, so you can get early release stuff, ask questions over there, uh, and it really helps me to formulate the next video that we're working on. So I really appreciate uh, everybody that goes and does that and asks questions and feeds that whole content machine, helps me make better videos. So thanks for hanging out, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one.